Hi Coronado, I'm Blair King, Coronado City Manager, and this is the weekly update for the week ending March 26 of 2021. You know, the city is seeking feedback on its performance to help us gauge our community satisfaction levels. The city is working once again with the National Research Center that's out of Boulder, Colorado, to help develop a scientifically valid survey of residents. These randomly selected may soon see a postcard announcing that a survey is about to be mailed to them. Scientific surveys are carefully built with an eye towards validity and reliability. That's what we're looking for, something that really tells us how we're doing. The city asks that you please complete the National Community Survey, either the hard copy or online. We use the results to look for ways to improve our performance across the city. You know, the city urges all drivers to be, please be especially careful and to obey post speed limits following a collision involving a 12-year-old bicyclist and a vehicle early this week. Local schools are resuming some in-class schedules, and due to the pandemic, there are multiple bell schedules, meaning there are students traveling to and from school when perhaps drivers are not expecting them. The bicyclist was taken to Rady Children's Hospital trauma unit with serious injuries. The driver cooperated with investigators. Alcohol and drugs did not appear to be a factor in the collision. Coronado residents were given a chance to weigh in on the win room earlier this week. More than 70 people attended a virtual presentation on March 24th by project architect Mark Steele and Coronado Library Director Sean Briley on plans to remodel and expand the wind room. Issues addressed included the scale of the project, its impact on the Jason Park, and the need for an improved facility. Questions and comments were taken from the audience, with most favoring option B. A video recording of the town hall meeting can be seen on the wind room page on Comment Coronado. The city's testing site for COVID-19 has permanently been closed due to a significant drop in the number of tests being administered. The drop is good news overall and may be attributed to the decreasing number of COVID-19 cases, the availability of testing at other sites in San Diego County, and the increased number of vaccines being administered. The site at the Coronado Club Room and Boat House offered testing as convenience to Coronado residents since January this year. During its operation, a total of 942 people received 1,303 tests, including 550 viral tests, 366 rapid tests, and 387 antibody tests. Two panels interviewed six candidates last week for the Administrative Services Director position. One panel consisted of people in the profession, and the other included members of the community. Recommendations provided from each panel. Final interviews with the top candidates and background checks are being conducted right now. An announcement of the new director is expected very soon within a week or two. The contractor on the golf course lighting improvement project continues to install concrete light bowler bases around the clubhouse, which will impact parking, but only minimally. Circulation around the backside walkway of the clubhouse will be reduced starting next week. The solar light bullards are expected to be installed next week, and the hardwire light bullards are scheduled for installation earlier in May. The city is excited, and I am too, to announce that Coronado Junior Lifeguards is back. Dates for required swim tests and the program have been announced. The city made the difficult decision last year to cancel the entire Junior Lifeguard and Surf Awareness program due to the pandemic and restrictions on gatherings. But this year it's different. The city is able to offer Junior Lifeguard program to those ages 9 to 17. The Surf Awareness program will not be held this summer due to staffing issues. The Junior Lifeguard program will look different this year though. Classes will be split into three age groups and broken down into cohort groups with one instructor for every 10 students. You can see the flyer with all the details in the weekly update that's online or on the lifeguards webpage. Re Registration begins for residents May the 5th and for non-residents on May the 19th. Register soon, the space will fill up. Coronado Recreation Golf Services is bringing a number of Easter related activities to the community in safe and fun way. First, the annual Easter extravaganza event will be held as a drive through Easter activity on Saturday, April the 3rd. Registration is required. Each vehicle will receive a to-go egg hunt kit. Second, residents can create handmade tie-dyed Easter eggs. Kits are $5. Watch the instructional video on CoronadoArts.com or on Coronado TV. Finally, residents can learn how to create personalized spring wreaths following along with the instructional video on Coronado Arts YouTube and on Coronado TV. These kits are $10. For more information on how to get a tie-dyed egg or wreath, call 619-522-7342. This week, we don't have a pet of the week because we have already featured all the adoptable animals we are currently housing, I and mean, that's great news. But I would like to use this time to remind the community of the city's unique public-private relationship with Paws of Coronado. 
In 2014, the city contracted with PAWS, a community-based nonprofit organization, to manage and operate the city-owned animal care facility. The relationship has created improved service and care for our animals. We hope this natural and successful partnership continues well into the future. To find out more about all the animals available for adoption, call 619-522-7371. For more information on these events and all the city's news, check out the City Manager's Weekly Updates. It's online.